Hello, friends. Welcome to the Quaker Stitch of Quaker Pod by a Quaker couple about anything and everything to do with modern American friends. We're your co hosts, Southgate and Salazar. And we're coming to you today from Haverford College, just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was founded by the Religious Society of Friends in the 1830s. We're here as participants of the gathering, which is the summer revival of FGC, that's Friends General Conference. It's like a national slash international org, and it meets yearly. And I say it's like where the Quakers who do lots of Quaker work go to have their vacation. Yeah, that's about the size right? of it. Right, it seems very much like that. Um, the theme this year is rooted in story, so it's a lot about storytelling. There's workshops all week. There's plenaries and talks and activities and all these this fun stuff to do. We're actually here a bit early because we came for the POC pre-gathering. Yep. We're staying in the FGC affinity groups. We're all in like one of the halls on campus and all of the halls are named after like famous Quakers of, the, of yesterday. So we're staying at Barclay Hall of Barclays Apology. Barclays. <laughs> exactly. And uh, both the Friends of Color and the AYF, which is the Adult Young Friends group, are all in our dorm. And we came in on Friday night. Actually, we were in Atlanta for three weeks. He was working at the Friends School as a summer camp, as you guys know. We talked about that in Field Notes. And so we left Atlanta the morning of Thursday. And we traveled to Nashville. We stayed in Nashville all day long, like eight hours, I think. Then we finally got on, on our plane to New York. We landed in New York. Our, well, so, um, our flight got delayed like an hour two hours, something like that, way early in the morning. So it was unavoidable. We landed. Um, your mom packed you snacks for last night, for Friday night, right? Mm -hmm. Not last night, for Friday night. So you could eat because we weren't going to make it to, to dinner here, which we didn't. Yep. And then I left my lunchbox in the car. At the very last moment. Yeah. Like he made it all the way from, from Atlanta to Nashville, Nashville to New York, New York, like we stayed in our house for like 10 hours max i think we were in new york for 12 hours our new york the bus the bus to philly from philly we took a cab we were gonna take the train line but the the bus stopped in like a weird place so we just we ended up taking a cab because we were so tired because we've been traveling for multiple multiple days exactly and we got here and at the very last moment chase lost the lunchbox and so we had to eat out of the vending machines which reminded me of a time when i also had to eat out of the vending machines while staying in a hostel on the camino but i'll tell that story another time that's a good story. So then the next day, we woke up absolutely ravenous. And brunch didn't open till I think, 10. And we were there at 10 at the dining hall. And because we arrived late, we'd gotten our room key, but we hadn't gotten the meal tickets you're supposed to get. And so, because we'd missed dinner, as I said. And we just stood there looking so sad and pitiful, being like, work with the conference, please. Will you feed us? <laughs> and the workers there were like, uh, we have to get the manager. The manager came and they were like, no, no, you'll eat. It's fine. Let's just get the manager. The manager was like, okay, it's fine. You're with the conference. Just make sure you finish registering. Because we looked so sad. <laughs> we were so hungry. We hadn't eaten real food in like so long. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it was delicious. Oh, thanks to FGC. It was sponsoring our trip here. We both got the Mahala Ashul... Ma Mahalia Dickerson. Mahalia. Is it Ashley Dickerson? I think, yeah, Mahalia Ashley Dickerson Fund. Yes. And for the conference to be yeah. able to attend. Uh, and she was this badass black Quaker lady who was a lawyer way back when and settled in Alaska. Exactly. Um, and then we also, we got funding directly from FGC. And we got the Bayard Rustin Scholarship Fund for the travel. Yes. Like, covered the travel cost. Which actually we got, we asked for 130 because that's what we looked up the tickets. But because we didn't know we'd gotten it till much, much later, the tickets actually rose to 150 which is everything we had. And then we also had to pay another fee. I don't remember why. We had to change the ticket at the last minute. And we had to pay $40 there. And then the cab ride was like another $40. So we spent $80 of money we do not have like on transportation as well. But we got 150 right? Yeah, 150 so We got, we got 150 from the Bear Rustin Fund. And they told us that we could probably get up to a certain amount refunded afterwards with the receipts yeah. to make up for the difference in travel. It's really hard because like you could make it cheaper if you knew if you could actually have the money sooner to buy these tickets. But by the time they tell you you have the money, much less give you the money, which we don't even have. Like this has all been on credit or our own cash, which, you know, we, dwindling. We, we then don't eat from the vending machine because we don't have any cash in our funds. That was. Yeah. So it's just a little bit annoying. But but we're very lucky to have those scholarships. And thank you to FGC. Yes. 
And a particular shout out to friends Anne Pomeroy, Liz Dykes, Regina Renee, the FGC Gathering Committee, and uh, Alyssa, a Haverford alum, also attending Gathering uh, for Linen, Last Minute Linen Rescue and the T. Oh, yes. Thank you, Alyssa. Yes. The T on the student strike of 2020 at Haverford, which is such a cool story for another day. Okay, so that's some of what we've done. I went, oh, we played this excellent game. I'll put some B-roll in here. Unable and Unwilling, which was equal parts crack a rib funny and triggering. <laughs> and everyone agreed. They were like, this is too real. This is too funny. This is too close to home. But it's a game about how, about Quaker business meeting. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Yeah, we were, when the dealer was dealing, everyone was picking up their cards and like, oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah, is what it's called. And it is, um, if this sounds like an ad, it's not because it's not available for purchase anywhere. So if you would like it to become an ad, that would be great. But this card game no longer gets printed and I don't know where to get it other than the POC Center, the FTC POC Center. Uh, so the POC Center has tons of books, board games, out of print books in particular, uh, handicrafts, t-shirts. You can get all the tea on all of the meetings of color. Yeah, this is a space where all the programming happens. There are, sometimes there's snacks for events or from events. What do we have here? Demographic data, five-year report. It's just very informative. There's a guest book to sign in with. These I was looking at last night are just like some really cool timelines like historic timelines very interesting they go in this direction just fyi these books excellent chase was really excited for that one genocide of the mind yeah you can't find it anywhere i've been trying at libraries all over these are articles by quakers it's like a binder full by quakers of color some great books Ujima friends which we want to go to we want to do a puzzle there's a puzzle and there's like toys for kids and books for kids and crafts. And this is where it's at. And maybe I'll put some video in there of how you can get to it. If you're getting in tonight at FJC Gathering um, at Haverford, we 2024, will we'll be greeting people on behalf of the POC Center in the dining hall. Yes, from five to seven. See you there. Thanks for joining us from part one of Field Notes from the story gathering by FGC. Hello, welcome to the Quaker Stitch, Quaker Pod by Quaker Couple. I made a noise. My bad. <laughs> Booper reels are.